Hi, my name is Chris Worthington. I'm the owner of Doll's House Cottage Workshop. Today I'd like to show you a couple of products that's on our website, dollshousemoldings.com. So here we have two Argus surrounds. First one is a plain one, which is product code 1745. And then we have a bricked Argus surround, product code 1745B. So the first one, the plain Argus surround, the augers are sold separately and with this it's plain simply because it's smooth you could add some tiles or just keep it like that secondly let's just put that back is the bricked augers around now with this one we've cut the brickwork directly into the panels it then needs painting which we'll go through on another video but it assembles just the same way as the plain one and you've got the brick effect so in a minute we're going to look at how to assemble one of these kits but first of all let's just look at some dimensions you don't have to use this same auger there's others available provided that they'll fit in the opening so the overall opening size is 86 millimeters or just over three and a quarter inches and then we've got an overall height down to the half of 136 millimetres which is around about five and a quarter inches the instructions are inside I've written and some images all neatly packed and lettered so what we're going to do is just move this back and take out the parts and then start from there. So we've now got all the parts laid out and you can see that the letters so A, B, C, D, E and F. And the instructions are corresponding to them letters. This particular one is 1745B which is the Brit uh, Argus around but it's exactly the same, the instructions are the same for 1745 as well. So we'll just turn these pieces over so you can see the brickwork and this one as well. And as the instructions say, they should be this way up so we can see all of the grooves you know, each of the pieces. So while we're talking of grooves, what we haven't mentioned yet is this additional groove. There's no parts that fit in that. This is make, basically to make it easier to cut down. So depending on the ceiling height in your particular doll's house, some are about eight inches high, some are nine, nine and a half inches. Overall height, that will fit a nine and a half inch high room or 240 mil. But should you need to cut it down to another common size, which is around about eight inches high or 203 mil, that's there for that. Much, much easier to cut through rather than cut through the whole thickness as you've only got to cut through half of the thickness so assuming that you don't need to cut anything down we're just going to assemble this, well, we're going to dry assemble this at the moment because we don't want to glue anything, we want to familiarise ourselves with how it goes together so we take the various components and look again at the instructions so let's just move a few things to one side and then what we'll do have a look at these with the brick back. The instructions will tell you that you now add part C and part D into grooves of back part, A, part B. The instructions also point out that these mortar lines must line up. So for instance because it's narrow at the bottom you don't want to put it that way. It simply won't line up. So as long as we do that, that's the correct way. So I'll put this down on a flat surface and then just push those in. So that's that one in. Now D, same principle, like that. You can see they're a nice fit and that's the back and sides already made up. Right, so now we need to fit the front to this or the back to the front, however you want to put it. So that will then turn over slot into, let me show you that again, 
those inner grooves there are in line with the back. Slots into place there. Up. And then we add the outer uprights. Now here, you can see there's no groove on that side. That's because that's going to go into the groove of the front. And that groove there is for the back to slot into. And this is just a little brace. And this one here is again to cut down the height as we've done before. So that slots in there into that groove and the back just into position. And then same again here. Turn that round. Up and into position. And all you really need to do at this stage is make sure all of these are flush at the bottom. Because there's a little bit of tolerance on, on the height. So we just make sure that that is correct there, like that. Then we have the brace G. So if you're keeping the full height, just to stop this from squashing in, obviously you'll be gluing this, we add the brace there. And that just keeps that apart in the correct distance. So now carefully holding it together, turn it over like this and then we're going to use the horse just to keep everything square so you can see although it's a good fit at the moment this movement now because we're not gluing this we can put this in anywhere it doesn't have to be at the bottom where it's going to be later on we can put it halfway and have that there and then a couple of elastic bands just to hold this together while the glue dries and of course as we've said at this stage there's no glue we'll just dry assembled it so the elastic band goes on now like this <laughs> and of course because we've got no glue this is now dropped out but we can just drop that back into position keep a bit of tension on it there while I put another elastic band on and that's it if that was all glued up at this stage, we can leave that to one side, let it dry and then of course take the elastic bands off and put the hearth in the correct position. So assuming that you've used the PVA glue that we recommend, this will be dry in about half an hour. So we can move the hearth out of the way for now. And now we can start on fitting the surround pieces. So two of the edges to the square should be flush one edge flush with the inside edge of there and one edge flush with the bottom so once you glue that in place and then same on the other side we're going to have the uprights these have a small groove in them there or rebate that's upward facing upward and glued on again flush with that edge and up to the square piece so same again on this side flush with the inside edge and up to the square bottom base. We then have the lintel pieces. Now these are these have a bevel on one edge on both of them and that should be pointing down and inward. They go on there flush with that underside edge there and flush with the outside edge of the uprights. This will create a gap in the middle for the keystone. The keystone is then glued into place there. Now that then needs to be flush at the top. So the keystone will actually hang down below there. It needs to be flush at the top ready for the mantelpiece which has a nice moulding around there. The main flat is the top and that sits on up to all of that equally. So you'll end up with a small gap on each side like that. Now then the hearth can go in in its position at the bottom and again obviously flush. But you can even put that in later, it doesn't really matter. And that's obviously all glued together, that will sit neatly in place. And that's the surround made up. Okay, for the purpose of this video, of course, we've just shown where everything fits. What you would do ordinarily, or, or to make life easier, 
is to paint the parts first. So if we just bring this one back in and have a look. The hearth is still separate. There was actually no need to glue that in. So that's been painted grey. We did all the brickwork. Painted the main part in a, a white or an off-white. And then before we glued this Argus around on, we painted that in a stone colour. So much easier to do that way. Glue in place as we've already done. And then that would be it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. Don't forget, all the contact details and product details are available on our website. So if you'd like any further help, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.